Guests seem to love to pigeonhole bands and to give them their own terms of descriptions. So we'd have come up with their own term, which is Swampadelic. I asked Pete and Tim from the band what exactly this means. That's hard. Can't really justify it at all. But we just made it up for the press, you know, because like they were saying, like, a bit like the doors or a bit like this, a bit like that. And we thought, well, this sort of, this word sums it up for us. And hopefully, you know, people, when they hear the music, they'll recognise that word and they'll, they'll agree with us. That's what it's like. Yeah, I mean, it's got, like, sort of elements, if you like, of, I mean, if you want to define swamp, it's like sort of vaguely rock and roll, rockabilly type stuff. And obviously the psychedelia thing is that, you know, everyone likes to sort of freak out a bit now and again. You know, it's just, I mean, it's just for convenience sake, really. And, you know, you may as well give it a name yourself rather than have one thrust upon you. And it is difficult for the press, I suppose, because they can't actually say, well, they're like this or they're like that, you know. And it's easier to just say, well, we're actually like this, you know. It doesn't mean too much, you know, you know it's not something we're going to hold on to for the rest of our lives, and it's Swampadelia. Swampadelica. Swampadelica, yeah. Ange, the singer in particular, has been like Jim Morrison. I think, it, in a way, it's like for people to pigeonhole him again. And yeah. um, a sounds review described Ange as, it said, Ange is sex. <laughs> yeah, it did, yeah. It did, yeah. What do you think about that? I mean, how do, how do you think he copes with it? And like, how do you how do you sort of cope with the whole fact of people like looking at him as like a sex symbol rather than as listening to the band as music or as how you sort of come across on stage? Well, I don't know how he copes. So I think he just shrugs it off, really. Yeah, he just you thinks know, it's really mean, funny. Like I mean, it is really funny, you know, because he's not. You know, he's, I mean, he'd be the first person to say that he wasn't. You know, that he didn't really know what anyone was on about. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just the journalists who are writing this, and um, it's all the male journalists who have been writing that, which, you know... Which is sort of ironic. Make right? what you like out of that, yeah. I suppose. But. And as for the Doors bit, I suppose... He's tall and he's got a deepish voice, yeah. I suppose. That's about the only thing about it. Really. And a lot of the songs are in D, aren't they? Yeah, right? a lot of the songs are in D. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually interested in the whole thing about the sort of penis references in Skin, which the press have been picking up about. Right. And have you sort of cut off your nose to spite your face in a way to get it on, like the radio at all? Well, I mean, I, you know, it's just a word, really. It doesn't, you know, it's just... I mean, it's just a sort of... I don't know, it's just a sort of comment on male worries, really, I suppose. It's just a sort of comment about nothing, really. It doesn't... You know, I can't really see why that word matters or if anybody doesn't want it on or worries about it. You know, it is actually like, it's not a, a rude word. And I think it has some relevance to the song and it has some relevance to the sort of thing we want to comment about. So I don't, I mean, as I say, it wasn't a deliberate thing. It wasn't deliberate to wind anyone up or to get the rec record banned so that it would become number one or anything. You know, it's just like, you know, people worry about their hair and their money and their penises, you know? It's as simple as that. We enjoy what we do. We enjoyed putting the gigs on. When we when we started, we were putting our own gigs on in London, and, and everybody was really into it because we were doing the films and the tickets and the, the door. You know, we were on the door, and, and we did the show, and we get the support band and the DJ. And, and I mean, you know, if you, it doesn't matter. But nothing else, nothing else really matters. You know, I mean, as long as you can keep doing that sort of thing, it's so much more than anyone else has got anyway. You know, I mean, most people who work in, in offices or whatever. They don't have as much. They don't have that much in their lives, you know. How do you know? Well, because I've worked in places like that, and they've all said, "I wish I played instruments. I wish I was in a band. I used to play a bit of guitar when I was 12, and I gave it up because of this and that." It's not the be-all and end-all, though. People who work in offices could have. No, I'm not saying. Lives. Obviously, there's there's a lot of people who work in offices who are, who are extremely fulfilled. You can get fulfillment out of anything. But what I'm saying is. But in, I mean, I've worked in, I worked in a jewellery shop for a year, I worked in a tele sales office for a year, I've done this, that and the other. And everybody has always said, I wish I'd never given up, I wish I still did it. It's always something that people say, I wish I still did, you know. And so many people have always had, like, a little involvement with it. And it's something that, you know, I mean, you know, sure, people have a lot in their lives, but there's so much more to be got out of doing something that's just... I don't know, coming straight from you as a little more creative. I don't want to get too hippy about this, but there is, you know... You can get, you can just get so much out of it. And it's just, I mean, it's just not that hard to do either, you know. It's just not that, it's just, it's just not that difficult thing to do to be in a band or play an instrument, you know. It's really quite easy, really. And people give it up for the wrong reasons, I think, as well, you know. <laughs>